Despite the Sun being on a three-game losing streak, Kyla Charles is making the most of her opportunity. With Joswell Jones still overseas, Kyla has upped her minutes and scored in double figures in each of the team's last three games. Her journey continues tonight, and the Sun looks to put the losing streak to bed. Wings, Sun, coming up next on Nesson. Welcome into Mohegan Sun Arena on a Tuesday night. The Sun at 8-5, still third best in the WNBA, hosting the Dallas Wings, one of the hottest teams in the league since the beginning of June. Welcome into the broadcast booth, Brendan Glasheen, Kim Adams. It's great to have you with us. And Connecticut is riding a three-game losing streak. The obvious missing ingredient is Jonquel Jones. And the team just is trying to find ways to piece it together without her. Yeah, and they just had a tough road swing out in Chicago. The Sky are a team who are finally healthy. So those were two tough losses, but you see the obvious numbers there. The scoring is a little bit down, but more notably, they're missing her on the defensive end, giving up 87 points per game in those three games without John Quell. So a lot to still work out here, but they're hoping in game four without her, they could figure it out a little bit more today, Brendan. And John Quell's been terrific in the Euro basket postseason right now 24 points 17 rebounds last time out let's find out Kim who needs to step up their game well some players have stepped up their game who needs to keep it up here these next couple games yeah absolutely it's been a collective effort but maybe nobody more than Kyla Charles you mentioned those scoring numbers 13 points per game in her last three has entered the starting lineup and then how about Emma Cannon she is the one who's on the replacement contract for John Quill. she's added some strength some size down low she's on the boards and then Natisha Heideman somebody who was in the starting lineup earlier in the season while they had a few pieces coming back late but they would love to get her three-point shooting going again she brings a lot of energy and there is good news for Connecticut Kurt Miller is back on the sideline coaching his mother uh, dealing with a stroke Kurt is back after missing the two games in Chicago but the leadership has remained strong in his absence. For more on that, here's the third member of our team, Robin Brown. Assistant coach Brandy Poole has been coaching alongside Kurt Miller since 2001. They spent 13 years together collegiately and are now in year four together at the pros. Well, that's a numerous amount of years to consistently be in someone's ear and running the scouts during practice. She said moving to that leading chair was a completely different role. When they were in Chicago, she said it was a group effort that the coaching staff took in game planning, but she felt confident and comfortable being in that lead role. Kurt Miller was still texting them during halftime of adjustments that could be made, but she said, I'm glad that we have him back here on the sidelines with us tonight. Brendan? And Brandy had the game plan for Candace Parker on Saturday. Kurt Miller's first task coming back is Arike Agumbawale, who is the reigning, scorer, reigning leading scorer in the W. Fourth in points per game this year. Uh, tough to stop the guard on the other side. Yeah, Arike just one of the most electric young stars in the game, averaging better than 20 points per game, and the ball is on a string with her. She's got the handles. You see her getting into passing lanes. She is just on go 100% of the time, and of course, we can't forget about the three-point shooting, but Arike Agumbawale, just an absolute gamer who can score really from anywhere on the floor. Is one of the best one-on-one -on -one scores in the game when you need a bucket, she can go and get it. So you have your hands full when you're playing Enrique. The former star at Notre Dame has etched double figures in 50 consecutive games. We'll see how she fares tonight here at Mohegan Sun. Connecticut hosting Dallas lineups as well as tip-off coming your way next here on Nessa. Tonight's Connecticut Sun starting lineup brought to you by Bud Light Seltzer. Kyla Charles, the second year guard forward out of Maryland, makes her third straight start. Jasmine Thomas, Brianna January in the backcourt. Tawana Bonner and Brianna Jones manning the paint. And on the other side, Arike Agumbawale in the building with Mariah Johnson, Charlie Collier, Kayla Thornton, and Satu Sabali. Mariah Jefferson is also in there at guard for Dallas. 
Vicki Johnson, first year head coach of Dallas, hired in December of last year, the WNBA's only active black female head coach. Six and seven start for Dallas, and like we said off the top, excellent since June one, five and three after beginning the season one and four, her team has to remain focused out of the gate. That was, was key to splitting that Minnesota series last week. And Kurt Miller, great to see him back on the sidelines. Sixth year head coach of the Sun, the 2017 WNBA coach and executive of the year, sitting on 97 career wins. Let's go, let's go. So Kim Adams, sort of the big one here for Connecticut. Three game losing streak off until Sunday after tonight. We were just talking off air. You look at those standings, Connecticut sitting in third place, which is a little hard to believe. But once you get to fourth all the way to 12, it's really close. Yeah, absolutely. Dallas right in the mix there as well. Really from 4 to 11, it, there's just two games of separation, so you don't want to fall too far. If you're Dallas, you want to start working your way up in the standings. Both of these teams have a lot on the line. Connecticut wins the tip. Jasmine Thomas orchestrates up top. January with the swing. Thomas left wide open. In and out. We're going the other way. And right away, though, you saw some good ball movement from Connecticut. I think that's what they want to get back to. You saw a double team on Brianna Jones down low, and they were able to whip it around the perimeter. Didn't get it to fall, but they want to get some better ball movement going tonight. Lob into the block, turnover. Kurt Miller mentioned he thinks turnovers is going to be a big part of this game tonight. His team have to limit those and also try to force them on the other side. Yeah, the Sun had 18 turnovers in that loss over the weekend to Chicago. That was their most since they had 19 or 20 in the opener. And it, it's similar games because Chicago was an athletic team who can get out in transition, and so too can Dallas. So ball protection huge in this game for the Sun. And Kurt points to the physicality of Dallas, which presents a challenge. A young team, one of the youngest in the W. Agumbawale splits the double. Fadeaway, Jay, off the back iron. Bonner with the rebound. Yeah, and that's an interesting note, talking to Kurt Miller today. This is the first time the teams are squaring off in the regular season, but they did scrimmage against each other. So they are a little bit familiar with each other, even though, you know, there's different pieces in and out. But the physicality absolutely was what Kurt said is number one about this Wings team. Dallas, the number one rebounding team in the W. Great split by Kyla Charles to put Connecticut on the board. And you just see that confidence continuing to grow for the young player starting her third game in a row. And she's not hesitant anymore. She knows she's out there to score. She's been a big part of the rotation without John Quell. 13 points a game over the last three for the Sun. Bonner off and running, throws it away. Arike Agumbawale with the steal, two on one for Dallas. Great feed and finished off by Sabali. Yeah, and that, that's what you can't do against Dallas. We mentioned it. This is a team that from one to five can run the floor in their win over Minnesota. 23 points off of 15 links turnovers in the last game. Bree Jones, high low, finishes plus the foul. Dewana Bonner just surveying draws both defenders on that screen from Jones and Brianna Jones, a nice job of recognizing that. And just a quick cut to the basket. Good recognition from both players connecting there. Breezy coming off a career high, 22 points on Saturday at Chicago. And Brianna's doing a great job scoring all of her points in the paint. Top 10 in the league in points in the paint per game. Dallas made a franchise high 17 threes the other day against Minnesota. There's one on the board here at Mohegan. That triple for Jefferson. Yeah, they had 11 in the first half. Watch that half back this morning, and they were just lights out. So you have to A, stop them in transition, and B, locate the three-point shooters. 
That was unreal stuff. Six for 10 in the first quarter. Built a 15 point lead. Night and day compared to the game on Thursday against the Lynx. Yeah, and it was Marina Mabry who came off the mm. bench. As I was watching that back, she didn't come into the game until two minutes of the first quarter, ended up with a career high 28 in that game. So look out for her coming off the bench. Sabali, to, uh, pardon me, Thornton, too many steps. Thornton was in uh, inserted in the starting lineup for game two of that Minnesota series and really delivered with a nice punch, 10 points, two for four from distance. Yeah, Thornton has done some nice stuff in the starting lineup as Brianna Jones working inside. Connecticut by two. Three and a half minutes gone by in the opening quarter. Sabali to the basket, swarmed by Sun. Charles wants to move. Steps back, off the window and in. And I'd like to see Connecticut keep that up tonight, play with a little bit more pace. I thought when they had good moments in that second Chicago game is when they got out in transition and pushed pace a little bit. So that's something I think they could do a bit more of in this game tonight. Charles with four points, meeting her average. Sabali's three is strong. And you'll live with that. You'll live with Sabali taking the three. You want to make sure it's not a Goomba Wale, but Dewana Bonner with the answer from behind the arc. Nice to see that one go down. Bonner was just one for eight from three in the two games at Chicago. Timeout, Vicki Johnson and the Wings. Connecticut by seven, a 7-0 seven run. Bonner finding the back of the net from distance. Kyla Charles has been outstanding for the Connecticut Sun. Four points on the night so far. Here are her last three games, averaging 13 a contest. And this is more like the, uh, the Kyla Charles we were used to seeing last year. Robin Brown has more on the second year player out of Maryland. Yeah, Brendan and Kyla Charles last three games hitting those double digit points. The four games prior to that, she didn't record a basket. You both talked earlier about the circumstances Connecticut has been playing in with the absence of John Quell Jones, but the increase in minutes has allowed Charles to be a source of production for the Sun. She told me yesterday after practice that she feels more comfortable. The surge in minutes has led to a surge in confidence that she's taking advantage of. And something I would look out for tonight is her attack the basket mentality. Thanks, Robin. We've seen that already tonight, as well as a nice-looking jump shot. Yeah, sometimes when you get in there, you just you need to get some flow to the game, some minutes. And it's hard as a reserve if you're just coming in and playing a couple minutes. But now she's getting that bulk of the minutes and just allowing herself to come into her own game. Vicki Johnson not shy to go to her bench right away. Bella Allery into the game, as well as Marina Mabry, who had a career-high 28 over the weekend. Jones couldn't finish. There's Charles, offensive rebound. Yeah, the Dallas Wings, one of the deepest teams in the WNBA. Ariki Agumbawale, the only player on the team who plays more than 30 minutes, so you'll see them go to their bench a ton. And Ty Harris with the finish to make it a five-point game. Connecticut used a 7-0 run to force a Wings timeout. Loose ball, Charles back on it. Still the starting five for Connecticut. Brian January stops, leans in, touches all of the iron. Mabry the rebound. Switches to her left behind the back. Did not see Jones behind her. Charles wrestles for it. Jump ball. Beatrice Montpremier checks in for Brianna Jones. Montpremier had thoughts today on media availability about just staying ready coming off the bench. The team's been asked to go down the down the pine quite a bit in the absence of John Quill Jones. And the, the points per game for the bench is, is going up the last few games. Yeah, I mean, there's opportunities there to come in and make an impact. Dijanae Carrington actually didn't play in either game 
in Chicago. We'll see if Kurt Miller gets her back in because she usually brings energy, brings activity, and makes things happen. Here comes Harris, one of the better point guards in the SEC at South Carolina a few years ago. Another three for Dallas left short. We saw last year in the Wubble, Dallas is not shy, similar to the New York team that was in here a few weeks ago at Mohegan, not shy to take the three. Fade away by Bonner. Comes up empty, but out of bounds, turnover Dallas. And I think Connecticut has brought the energy defensively, which I think was important against this Dallas team who, when if you watch their last game against Minnesota, just came out and absolutely blitzed the Lynx early on. So you want to make them feel a little bit more uncomfortable in their offense, and I think the Sun have done that early. Four wings turnovers. Mom Premier through the block momentarily. Charles gets it back. Runner is strong. Harris the rebound. Harris pulls up, off the heel and in, friendly bounce. I just can't stop looking at Ty Harris's shoes. She's <laughs> yeah, got, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I don't, it looks like it's a, a mismatched set. I mean, those, I love those. It really is throwing me off too. <laughs> Kyla Charles has matching pink sneakers. and drains the three. Sun up six. Yeah, Kyla Charles, I mean, we mentioned the scoring, but she's been stretching the floor as well, which the Sun needs without John Quell Jones, one of the top three-point shooters in the WNBA. This is now her fourth three in the last three games. And Brian January thought she had a breakaway to herself, but whistled for a reach-in foul. And the cannon checks in. Kyla Charles, great minutes to start tonight's game. Nine points, four of five from the field, three rebounds. You can't ask for anything else from a young player to just come in and do what you're asked to do. A lot of that is defense, energy, but now she's bringing the scoring as well. Harris with the mid-air pass. Tough fadeaway jumper goes, Alicia Gray. They're Another just, former Gamecock. Yeah, so many talented guards on this Wings team. Ooh, a tough screen from Emma Cannon. Ty Harris is still down. Cannon helps her up, or is hoping to help her up. Yeah, Emma Cannon, I mean, man, I would not want to run into that screen, and that's where your, your teammate may have to yell a little louder that that one is coming. That was a a legal screen, but unfortunately, Ty Harris just didn't get the heads up that it was coming. Jasmine Thomas at the line. 11th year guard out of Duke. 81% free throw shooter. Wale checks back in for Dallas. Enrique, no points. About eight minutes into this one has etched double figures in 50 straight games, which is the league's best active right now. Yeah, just nine players in the league's history have done that. Remarkable stuff. Asia Wilson of Las Vegas, the next closest. Gray commits the fouls. So that's another turnover for Dallas. Now five in this first quarter. Yeah, and again, you're just seeing intensity from Connecticut. More intensity than we saw the last time they were home against Seattle. They are really bringing it on that end. They're locked into personnel. Inside, outside, sets up an in and out three for Thomas. Here comes Agumba Wale in transition. Pulls it out, shovels it inside, pretty finish. Nicely done, creating on the block. Yeah, it was good initial defense against her. Jasmine Thomas hustled to her stops the initial drive, but you can't let up against Agumba Wale. She's crafty with the ball. She'll get into the paint and that time finds Allery. Elbow J, Mom Premier off the mark. Allery averages just two points a game. Dallas within four. Akumbawale hoping for a shooting foul. 
Not going to get there. January commits the foul. That's her second. January pleads her case. As we come up on a minute to go in the first. Sun once led by seven. Tough running shot. Bonner another rebound. She had a really complete game against Chicago on Saturday, doing it all. That pass tipped out of bounds. Bonner had 17 points, eight boards, six assists. Yeah, that was impressive. Two steals and two blocks as well. I think there's been a lot of I think Dewana has put a lot of pressure on herself to try and carry the offense at times without John Quill, but I think they just need to play through each other, get her the open looks when they come. But yeah, that was quite a performance from her in Chicago this weekend. Stephanie Jones has checked in for Connecticut. Cannon, Bonner, January out there with two personals, and Jasmine Thomas. Shot clock down to eight. Ogumbawale, fade away, splash. That step back is just so pure. You could be in her face. She'll hit you with a step back. She'll hit you with a little side step and just creates her own space, creates her own shot. Filthy. Shot clock to 10, 10 second differential. Threading the needle January into Cannon. There is a foul. Allery commits the foul. That's a great setup by January. Noticed how the defense was rotating and put it right in the breadbasket. Yeah, and Emma Cannon, we mentioned she's on the replacement contract, has just been with the team for a couple games, but she's done a really nice job of being physical down low, asserting herself, getting position, and just being fully confident inside. These are her first free throw attempts with the team. Second stint with the Sun for Cannon, signed a training camp contract back in April of 2019. Was then waived in May. Spent the last two years in and out of the lineup with Las Vegas. Splits the trip. Sun by three. Dallas can hold for the final shot of the quarter. Arike Agumbawale. Down to three. <laughs> Ridiculous. Not many players in the league can do that. No words. Connecticut's lead is one. Ten minutes in. Arike Agumbawale, a handful for first quarter points. AT&T WNBA All-Star Game is back. Head over to WNBA.com slash vote or download the new WNBA app to vote daily until June 27th. Is this coming Sunday? You get your votes in yet? I'm not going to lie. I have not. I need to get on it. I've had a, a busy couple days, but we're definitely seeing some candidates out on the floor right now. Dewana Bonner, I mean, Arike Agubawale has to be a lock, right? I mean, the number she's been putting up. Ooh. Cancel the game if she's not in it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of people are rightfully so upset that she wasn't named to the Olympic team, but, you know, only in her third year as a pro, I would, I would guess in four more years, she will find herself on that roster. Four first quarter points. Jasmine Thomas off the bounce in the face of Agumba Wale to put Connecticut back up three. All-Star game is on July 14th, so it's right after the first half concludes and then we head for the Olympic break. Yeah, interesting format because they will be playing against the Olympic team. So <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of talent on the floor, maybe some some people playing in that game that feel they got slighted from the Olympic team, so I will be tuned in. Yes. It's a great strategy. That's how you stick it to them, right? In and out, Bonner wanted the foul. Dallas with the third best points per game clip in the W. Not as sharp from the field as they were from over the weekend. There's a nice finish for Izzy Harrison, the fifth year forward out of Tennessee. Third season with Dallas, has been traded twice in her career. 
one of the vets of this ball club, a young Dallas team. Cannon surrounded on the block, off her fingertips, wings ball. You know what's fun about Cannon? You spoke very highly of her, and I'm completely on board. She just keeps playing. Yeah, I mean, she is, she took a while to get into the WNBA. She's had quite a journey. She graduated college in 2011. Yeah. And then got to Phoenix, took a, played a couple years overseas, and now has gotten back to the WNBA. So just so much respect for a player like that who stays with it. Harrison on the block, another offensive rebound. Dallas ranks second in the W in that category. Tremendous job fighting on the block, and Dallas has a three-point lead. Kurt Miller takes timeout. We will as well. Second quarter just underway at Mohegan Sun. Dallas in front by three, led to a Kurt Miller timeout. Brendan Glasheen, Kim Adams, Robin Brown back at Mohegan Sun. Just taking a look at the box score, 11 points for the Dallas starting lineup. Look at the bench, 14, we'll have more on that. We did discuss the Olympics, which are upcoming next month. Robin has more. Brendan, the U.S. national team roster of 12 heading to Tokyo for the Olympics that you mentioned announced yesterday. A mixture of veterans and newcomers will be competing for that seventh consecutive gold medal. But Connecticut Sun's very own team president, Jennifer Rosati, will also be heading to Tokyo as an assistant coach. I got to speak with her this afternoon, and she said, I've been working for this moment since I first started with USA Basketball in 2006. I could not be more excited to join Dawn, Cheryl, Dan, and these amazing 12 women in our quest to win the seventh consecutive gold. It's a dream come true. So, Jen, if you're watching tonight, good luck in Tokyo. Yeah, Jen Rosati has been everywhere. She just won the gold medal with some of the top college players in the country down at the FIBA America. That was with Dawn Staley and Adia Barnes. So Jen Rosati is a woman of many talents right now. The Connecticut Sun definitely very fortunate to have added her to their organization. And we're looking forward to seeing more of Jen in the second half when the Olympics conclude. Lots of games here at Mohegan in August. Nicely done, a fadeaway Jay Allery. And the bench continues to add up production here. 16 from the Dallas bench. Dallas averages 29 points from its bench, which leads the WNBA. Yeah, they have a lot of talent on the bench. Players who could be starting. Marina Mabry has started about half the season, but they just come in confidently, and there's really no drop-off when they bring in any reserves. Heidemann steps back, leaves the three short, fresh into the game. Bounce pass to Brianna Jones. Heads up play by Bonner. Both of these teams, top rebounding teams in the league. It's going to be a big indicator in this one, who's more active on the offensive glass, especially in a tight one. You want to create those extra opportunities when you can. Blocking foul. Kurt Miller doesn't like the sound of that. Allery colliding on the block with a Sun player. Let's see the replay here. What it it's might cannon. be is that Cannon was in the restricted area. It Sometimes the restricted area doesn't apply depending on where the player is coming from. In that case, I think it did. So that may be why it was called a block and not a charge if her feet had been outside of the arc. That may have gone the other way. Either way, Kurt Miller definitely does not agree, but Kurt Miller was talking to us about as he was home, and, and we obviously are still thinking about his mom who's recovering from a stroke, but he was with her watching the last two games from the couch and said one thing he couldn't do was get emotional with the officials. So I think he's... He's just making up for that right now. He missed that. <laughs> yeah, he tweeted something about uh, getting a technical, or acknowledging that if he was there, he may have picked up a tech. <laughs> so it was nice to see Coach uh, interacting throughout the course of the game. Of course, his team's trying to halt this three-game losing streak and get back in the win column. Eight and five, still good for third 
in the WNBA standings. Dallas in the postseason picture, seventh in the W at six and seven. Four and four on the road this year. Since June 1, Dallas is five and three. The team started one and four. Yeah, and we mentioned, I believe it's from four to 11, is just a two game difference. So, you know, every game is, is really starting to matter here because you just never know what can happen with injuries. You do know when a Gumbawale goes down the lane, it's likely going in. But with the Olympic break coming back, you never know who's in, who's out. You want to start to create some separation as you head into these final few weeks before the break. Still no exact date on when Jonquel Jones might return for Connecticut. Of course, Alyssa Thomas is out for the season with that Achilles injury. Great up and under by Brianna Jones, holding down the fort with her post players missing. Yeah, Brianna Jones is just so steady. She doesn't hit you with blazing speed in her moves, but just has solid footwork, solid fundamentals, and works her way to the rim. Nine first half points. She averages 13 a game. Deep three, that one strong. Rebound, Connecticut. Miscommunication the other way, Agumba Wale. Heady per usual. And draws a foul before the shot. She pleads it was a shooting foul. Thornton had a great look. And this is just, you talk about the silly turnovers from the Chicago game when they had 18 in the last game. That's one that you hope you don't carry over from game to game, especially with a veteran guard like Breon January and Arike Agumbawale just lurking in the passing lanes. That's what you hope as a coach, you ixinate those and you come back cleaner. So that's the areas they want to just really sharpen that focus, take that extra half a second, know where you're passing. Number one overall pick, Charlie Collier back in and scores right away to put Dallas up five. Allery takes a seat. And for Connecticut, Kyla Charles back in. There's Brianna Jones. Puts that shoulder down, trying to go to work, and she's hit from behind. Brianna Jones is doing a solid job of establishing her position. That's a one-on-one -on -one coverage right there. They don't send any help. Sometimes she spins back to that other side, which I think would have been there easily for her, but either way, she draws the foul. First team foul against Dallas in this second quarter. We're more than midway through. Thomas, another mishap. What do you think it is? It's just, it's a little bit of a la lack of reading what's happening with the play. So I, I thought Brianna Jones was open on the roll if they had just waited a half a second and just take that extra half a second to see how the defense is playing it. Sabali hops on that loose ball. A whistle on the pass. Good to get, good to get Charles here. There's Kurt Miller, the Kurt cam. It works. You got to get a tracker, fitness tracker on coach. See how many. Yeah, he's going to see no how Fitbit? the heart rate is. Yeah, no see Fitbit how many or steps Apple Watch on. He is taken tonight. <laughs> kind of surprised. I like I've never seen him stand on the baseline where he is right now. <laughs> Might be a strategic decision to uh, not say anything else to the officials at that moment. Harris misses the layup under four to go in the first half. Connecticut shooting 38.5%. Dallas has been pretty good defensively. Three seconds. Violation. Three seconds. Yeah, and that time Dallas did send a quick double with Sabali just coming, getting on the other side of Brianna Jones. And that's when Jones needs to recognize a little quicker. Let me kick this out, repost, find a cutter. Collier from the elbow. Thomas has the board. Takes a three. Collier, great hustle, a jump ball. Thought for a second they might get Bree Jones reaching in from behind. It's a heads up play. Harris checks out. Marina Mabry checks back in. Shout out to the DJ playing Destiny's Child. Jumping, jumping. 
Very on cue. Thornton hops on the ball. Okumbawale fights through. Thornton cuts and lays it in. Timeout, Kurt Miller. Dallas has its largest lead of the first half. Seven will step aside and come back to Mohegan Sun. Well, at one point in this first half, Connecticut led 14 to seven, a touchdown lead on Dallas. 26 to 12 run for the Wings. They're up seven, 33, 26. We're coming up on three to play. Brendan Glasheen, Kim Adams, Robin Brown as well down on the floor. What, yet, what's key to the surge here for Dallas? Well, what's interesting is, is they've been known for their three-point shooting, but they've done it in the paint so far. Oh. Dallas just has one made three, but they have 24 of their 33 points in the paint. It's coming from guards getting into the lane. It's coming from forwards posting up. They are just being on the attack. Dallas averages just under 34 points in the paint per game. So easily more than halfway to that number. Bonner lays it in to make it a five-point game. Five points for Dewana Bonner. Four assists, eight rebounds. It feels Dewana's a little more willing to set up her teammates tonight taking a little pressure off herself to speak to what you were talking about earlier. Yeah, I think there's moments when she can try and make a play from herself, like right here, where they've totally isolated her. And that time they get it to go. I think they need to be strategic in how they're setting it up, which there they clearly put four players on the other side of the floor and said, DB, go to work. And she capitalizes. Four straight for Bonner, out of the timeout. Dallas by three. Ogumba Wale to Collier. Dallas does almost the same thing Connecticut's had trouble with. Mabry swings it. Sabali knocks down a three as the shot clock expires. Satu Sabali really just getting her feet wet for the wing. She had missed the first couple of games trying to qualify for the three on three Olympic team with Germany. And now she's really starting to come into her own. Brianna Jones expressing frustration. The crowd doesn't agree. Shocked. That was ruled off of the sun. And that's now eight turnovers for them. We mentioned the 18 in the prior game. That is an area they have to clean up, especially against a team like Dallas, who can take those turnovers and get a quick layup within a matter of seconds. Thornton is denied by Charles. Down to the deck. Sabali helps her up. Yeah, here's Kyla Charles. It's all ball. All ball, unfortunate foul from Thornton there. That's the one where you just sprint back, but we mentioned the impact Kyla Charles has been making. That's really what she was always known for is her defense. But now the Sun are getting the added benefit of her offensive package really coming together as well. When the team drafted her, Kurt Miller said it was a long shot she would fall to us because the Sun did not have a first round pick in 2020. Draft stock fell due to shooting ability. and She's been shooting it uh, really well, four for five. That was all in the first quarter, but a turnover here, back to the wings. Turnover number nine. And again, it's just kind of silly turnovers. Just not seeing where the defense is, trying to yep. force in passes. And that's something they'll have to clean up at the half for sure. Thornton gets a rest. Collier has two personals for Dallas. Brian January with two for Connecticut. Zabali into the paint. Babry has nowhere to go. Finds some space. Fires strong. Jasmine Thomas shouts from the top of the key. Charles around a pair of screens, fade away, well short. Seven of the 12 players Dallas has, former top seven picks, all in the last three years. Young squad playing very confident basketball, led by 24. Agumbawale draws a foul, she's heading to the line. 
I mean, you could just watch her handle the ball all day. Some players try and do a lot with the ball, but they don't go anywhere. They don't have a purpose. Arike Agumbawale uses her handle strategically to get that defender to just relax for a second or get them to shift one way and she goes the other. That is just hours and hours in the gym, repetition. She is so good at taking someone off the dribble and then reading it correctly if she should pull up or go all the way. Last year's scoring champion, top five in the W in free throws made and free throws attempted this year. Well, listening back to the broadcast when Dallas was playing Minnesota, she's one of those players that she gets a bit of a longer leash to feel out the game. And to your point, handling the basketball, it is so, uh, it's an art watching her do it, but she that's her way of feeling out the game and where she can exploit the defense. Yeah, I mean, she's going to see each individual matchup, how they're going to play her, how the defense is choosing to play the screens, and she's so good at reacting. See if Connecticut takes the shot clock down. Bonner with that floating layup, couldn't get it. Jones a three, strong. Out of bounds, Connecticut ball, .6 on the clock. Yeah, this will have to be something quick. You do have time for a catch and shoot. .3 or under, it has to be a tap. But it's obviously gonna have to be off quickly. Maybe get Dewana Bonner in the middle of the paint. Bonner releases, just short. Sun once had a seven point lead in this first half. And Dallas has the largest lead of the half. Eight points, wings up 38 to 30 here at Mohegan Sun. Connecticut hoping to stop a three game losing streak. Dallas meanwhile hopes to extend its win streak to two games and improve to six and three since June 1st. Vicki Johnson's squad focused and playing with confidence. Star of the first half, Kyla Charles, nine points on four of six shootings. She's joined by our own Robin Brown. Kyla, an early nine points for you here. How do you feel like your aggressiveness contributed in the first half? Um, I'm just playing basketball, honestly. I'm not overthinking. If they give me a shot, I'm taking it. Um, and I'm looking for my teammates. So I'm just trying to be aggressive in a, the right way, not taking bad shots, but um, taking what the defense is giving me. Kurt Miller back in the huddle after a two-game absence. What's it like to hear his voice and feel his energy again? Um, we're just happy to have our coach back. We know he was away for family purposes, but, you know, he's our coach for a reason. He knows how to get us in the right places, and we've missed him. So having him and his energy um, is, you know, just fueling us to be better and just make us uh, – uh, play harder. Thank you, Kyla. You're welcome. Brendan. Robin, thank you. 38 to 30. Dallas in front. The largest lead on either side of this first half. We'll step aside and begin our halftime coverage at Mohegan Sun. Born for this moment. Basketball. It's everything. It's my passion. My joy. My stage. But most importantly, this game amplifies my voice. We won't stop pressing for full transparency and full and complete justice. To take a stand or a knee. To fight for what is right. To strengthen my community. For my family and for my people. For today and for those that follow. An athlete, an activist. was born for this moment. We're just about set to start the third quarter here at Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. Brendan Glasheen, Kim Adams, and Robin Brown. Great to have you with us on a Tuesday night. WNBA Hoops, folks watching on Nesson Plus locally as well. All right, so Dallas up by eight. Connecticut once led this ball game, folks, 14-7. So since a 31 to 16 wings run, wings run, pardon me. Jonquel Jones still out for the Sun, but defensively, like we've talked about, Connecticut does boast the top points per game defense in the W. 
I think defensively, as we've discussed, they've been there. If they could just take care of the ball, things will come offensively. Well, defensively, the problem they had in the first half was just allowing guards to get into the paint. Yep. And I understand, like, Arike Ngumawale is, is one of the toughest guards. I mean, actually guarding a player and sure. keeping her in front. So they're going to have to, you know, maybe play with some subs coming in, just try and find anybody who can keep up with her foot speed because that's been the problem for Connecticut turnovers on the offensive end, but then defensively just allowing ball handlers to get into the pain and not rotating quickly enough. And Kurt Miller told us pregame, late in the shot clock, Dallas has the ability to make plays. So you look at that stat sheet a lot of the times, and there's a Goomba Wale to the basket. You might see a team here that makes a lot of threes, but he understood coming in, there's capability of getting to the rack. And, and here it is right on cue. You, you let her beat you, and you don't step up and help soon enough you have to slide into that help position and meet her in the middle of the paint. I mean, obviously the first line of defense is to not get beat because now everyone has to shift around, players are getting into foul trouble, but Arike Agumbawale is just having a field day with getting by defenders off the ball handling right now. 10 points, which now means 51 straight games for Arike Agumbawale double figure scoring. That's the longest in the league. 51. Dating back to her first season as a rookie in 2019. Charles on the glass, similar to the first quarter, sitting on those nine points. I can't remember the exact number, but Arike had a crazy stretch in her rookie year where she had multiple 30 point games in a row. It was insane. She has nine for her career. Scoring champion last year. You can make the case that her rookie year was even more impressive. Yeah, that was the crazy year where it was her and Nafisa Collier from the Minnesota Lynx battling it out for rookie of the year. It could have gone either way. It went to Collier. Mm. So you have to think that's something always in the back of Arike's mind. But the scoring production has always been consistent. Now I think she's starting to add the defense as well because people have said she doesn't play both ends of the floor. Well, now we're seeing her really get into passing lanes, and right now she's even working in the post. That's championship pedigree from Notre Dame. That ball swiped. Second half start for Ty Harris. Two to shoot, Bonner, but a whistle along the baseline. We're up here in the concourse, not sure what the whistle was for. It inverted whistle, perhaps? I don't know. Shot clock reset. Another whistle off the ball. And there was an equipment malfunction. That's what the stat the stat portal tells us. So we'll just go with that. And now we get a foul. <laughs> and that time you saw Connecticut have better spacing to allow Brianna Jones to seal inside. Spacing is very crucial for Connecticut in this half. Dallas has built a double digit lead. Shot clock to seven. Bonner accepts, collects. Dribbles away from the defender, and that fadeaway goes. And Bonner's reading the defense. They're not sending her a double in the post, so she's able to get some space. That's when her teammates are clearing out a little bit, and she's able to use her length to shoot over the top. Thornton dribbles up top in the hands of Ogumba Wale. Seven to shoot. Jones is on her. Picks up the dribble. Sabali for three, knocks it down. She's been fantastic in this one. And if she could really start hitting that consistently, that just adds another layer to her already impressive repertoire. 10 points for Satu Sabali. 11 point lead. Thomas has it poked away. Two defenders meet her on the baseline. Ball stays with the sun. The whole key to Sabali's game, too, is just that three-point shot. Shot less than 20% last year. If she can add that to her game more consistently, look out. 
Yeah, because she's already a player who has that mid-range game. How about the defensive play there by Saboli right on cue, getting her hands on the ball from Bonner. Bonner commits the foul. So it looks like they hit Dewana with a little reach and once Saboli stole it from her as Saboli was trying to kick it up ahead. So she saves potentially a layup but gets a foul in the process. Harris, the second year guard. Enrique takes the shot clock down. Jones comes out on the switch and there's contact. I think that's an underrated part of Enrique Agumbawale's game. She can get opponents into foul trouble, whether it's just toying with them like that on the dribble, attacking the paint. We've seen her draw a couple of early fouls here in this third quarter. It's something you won't see on the box score except the fact that Jones picks up a foul. That's her second. Three minutes into the second half. Connecticut trying to halt a three-game losing streak. Saboli for three. Woo! She is feeling it. Triple number three for Satu Saboli, the southpaw, knocking it down. Wow, Saboli up to 13 points, letting it be known. I think she even gave a little shush to the crowd after that one. We'll have to see the replay. Jasmine Thomas, January heads up, saw the half-court line. Even though she saved it on the equator, we get a whistle. Sabaldi commits the personal foul. 30% from three coming in. And like we talked about, when she gets going, she'll be a difference maker on this Wings team, a young basketball team. And if you're an outside shooter on this team, you're gonna get the looks because of how easily the guards can get into the paint and create for you. Jones up top, now Bonner going to work with three to shoot. Tough shot, Jones, offensive rebound. Cuts it to 12. Double figures for Brianna Jones, 11 points. And that's what the Sun need a little bit more of, creating some second opportunities. Getting on the glass, Brianna Jones, one of the best in the league on the offensive glass. Turnover, Dallas. Five mishaps for the Wings in the first half. For Brianna Jones, she's now up to nine games this year in double figures. Need that scoring punch with Jonquel Jones out. Bonner off the pick. Off the heel, tipped out, last touched by Dallas. And you look at the offensive production, it's down about eight points a game with Jonquel out and the defensive numbers stand out too. Really looking back at that Seattle game and those Chicago games on the road. Connecticut gives up 15 more points per game without Jockwell Jones. Yeah, and on the offensive end, I think it just proves how important John Paul Jones is with her unique size and skill set. But Brianna Jones letting her teammates know she'll continue to elevate her game with the N1. Brianna Jones had set a screen, then rolls into a post-up. And we mentioned it earlier, she just has really fundamental footwork down low. You rarely see her travel. She'll hit you with some spin moves. She'll see which side the defense is playing. And she's just a really smart post player. Remember earlier in the season, Kurt Miller, very complimentary of her IQ and just has a good sense for the game. And, and great to see the energy. The Sun need a pick-me-up here. Down nine. Thomas, face guards up top. Mariah Jefferson, contested three. Charles with the rebound. Kyla Charles picks up her dribble. A whistle. Allery on the post, I think, was holding Bonner. Yeah, Connecticut got bailed out there. <laughs> because that was looking like a, a clear turnover, another kind of silly pass, but Dewana Bonner is physical inside. She will fight you. Allery still can't believe she was whistled for the foul. 
First trip at the line tonight for Dewana Bonner, one of the top free throw shooters in the W, 86%. Mabry checks in for Dallas. Also our first and Izzy Harrison, who has checked in prior. Her first minute to the second half. Seven point game. The lead was 14 just moments ago for the Wings. Sabali, spin move, Jones the board. Sense the momentum moving here. Bonner, three, short. Charles, offensive rebound. Those are adding up now here, Kim, in the third quarter for Connecticut. Bonner decides to attack. Fakes looking towards the pass and decides to lay it in at one. Down to five. And that's where Duana Bonner is at her best. I know she has improved her three-point shooting this season, but this is her bread and butter at 6-4, taking a player off the dribble, using her length to attack. Dewana Bonner has her team within five. Five straight points for Dewana Bonner to bring Connecticut within five. We've talked about this. She's putting a little more pressure on herself in the absence of Jonquil Jones. Still very productive in her 12th year as a WNBA player. And look, her daughters are in attendance tonight. Twin daughters, Callie and Demi. Dewana gave birth to her kids back in 2017, missed the season. Now, I, I would guess, Kim, they're listening to us. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Oh, they know that they're yeah, see, on they right now. It. They are stars. They knew they were on. They put on the faces for the camera. There they are, girls. Give us a little wave. But yeah, on top of the, the numbers that Dewana Bonner has consistently put up in her impressive career. I mean, she's a mom. I know Callie and Demi were out on the practice floor the other day, but they're kind of just vibing over there in their own world. They're leaving it to mom, and they're just on their little devices. you got to love the headphones. Future stars, perhaps, in the W. Ogumba Wale hits her first three of the night to halt this Connecticut run. Bonner to the basket, and one. I'm not gonna lie, I looked right at Callie and Demi. I did the and they same were thing. they were down, they were looking down at their iPads. But we saw it. We saw Dewana Bonner and we mentioned it. She just did this her last possession. This is when she's at her best. It's very hard for a player to stop her at her length, her speed, her athleticism. She has been on the tack. She's willing her team back into this game. Callie, Demi. Mom has 17 points. <laughs> Playing Nine well. Nine rebounds, too. Yeah. Hoping for her second double-double. Shouldn't be hard to come by. Four to go, third quarter. Four-point game. Five to shoot. Jefferson spins, floats, short. There's the rebound for Bonner. 17 points, 10 boards, four assists. Second double-double of the season. Brianna Jones posting up. Bonner goes into her. Bonner. Off the catch to the basket. Beautiful play and set up by Brianna Jones. When that double comes to you, you want to react quickly because you know somebody's open. Get that ball moving. It was Brianna Jones out of the double team who created set up spacing for her teammate. Here it is, so that Brianna Jones kicks out. And this has been unstoppable here late in the third quarter. Dewana Bonner off the dribble, just so fundamental. Little pump fake to get by Agumba Wale. Callie and Demi, what do you think, ladies? We should, we need like a live mic on them, maybe a, a little Robin interview when they get a little older. But mom is putting on a show, 19 and 10 for Dewana Bonner. Just a two-point lead now for the Wings. Just a terrific game for Bonner. Willing Connecticut back into this one. After tonight, the Sun going to stay right here. Chicago comes to town to wrap up the season series. So Candace Parker, first time as a member of the Sky, will be here at Mohegan. 2 p.m. Eastern time tip on Nesson.
Yeah, that'll be an interesting one because obviously Connecticut was just out at Chicago losing both of those games. So it'll be a, a quick turnaround to kind of try to right the ship, see when, what went wrong in those two games and try to serve them up some revenge. If I remember correctly, Bonner had seven points at halftime. 12 now in this third quarter. She's gotten back to her game. I know we talked about, you know, the three point shooting has gotten better, but sometimes, at times, we mentioned the pressure to score more with John Quell out, but she's getting back to what she does best, and that's attacking and getting in the rim. Well, let's keep in mind that's not easy to do when they quickly, I mean, amazing when you think back how quick there's a travel here on Dallas, how quickly John Quell and DB meshed on the court together. Yeah, absolutely. After a year absence. And after the last game, coach, assistant coach Brandy Poole, who was serving as head coach, also reminded us that Dewana Bonner is now playing out of position. She's most naturally a three, but she's playing the four right now. So she, too, is just kind of adjusting to how to play that different spot, and today things are clicking. January down to the deck. Mabry commits the foul. Connecticut has outscored Dallas 17 to 11 in this third quarter, January at the line. First point of the night for Breon January. Veteran guard in year number 13. 71% from the free throw line this year. Two for two trip. We're tied at 49. We talk about the youth of Dallas. It's the polar opposite of Connecticut with two veteran point guards in Jasmine Thomas and Breon January. Steal on this side. January with the swipe, takes it back from Bonner. Lob to Jones, hesitation, lays it in, and the lead is back to the sun. Connecticut has cleaned up their passes, their post-entry passes. They're, they have better spacing. They're not trying to force things. Brianna Jones doing a nice job of creating separation inside. Bonner wants to keep this train moving. And also, Kim, just two turnovers in this third quarter for Connecticut. Great dump into Jones. Ooh. Lays it in. Yes. Fifth assist for Bonner. Pretty basketball right there. Two post players. Working together, Brianna Jones moves so well without the ball. Easy basket, Harrison. And on the other side, two players working well. Agumba Wale continues to just get into the paint, reading the defense, finding an open teammate. Fourth assist for Arike Agumba Wale to go along with 13 points. Bonner has 19, 11, and 5. Shot clock to three, puts the shoulder down, off the window and in. DB on a mission here in the third. She's unstoppable right now. We talked about in the first half, it was Agumba Wale getting into the paint at will. Well, now it is Dewana Bonner at 6-4. Sun was down eight at half, now up four with 125 to go in the third. Bonner has 14 in this quarter. Jasmine Thomas and Brianna Jones get a rest. Heideman and Cannon check in. Around the screen, Alicia Gray draws contact and a foul against the Sun. It's Cannon. That is the fifth. Both teams have hit the limit in this third frame. Gray to the line. Dallas, a good free throw shooting team. 83%, top four in the W. Go ahead. <laughs> Spoke a little too I mean, you're going to point at me and not make, I'm not going to say anything? I, I didn't want to call you out. <laughs> I was going to see if you owned up to it. 
<laughs> well, afterwards, I was going to mention how Gray's 87% this year. There you go. One possession game. We're in the third. Connecticut has lost three straight. Trying to win its first game without John Quell Jones, who is in France competing for Bosnia in Eurobasket playoffs. Dallas has been getting much better since the start of June. One of the best young teams in the W. Sabali facilitates to the basket. Short rims it, but will head to the line. Yeah, Dallas, one of the best young teams, and Sabali, one of the best emerging talents. And like we said, she missed the first couple of games of the season with the Wings, and I think she's really just starting to get comfortable. I've been impressed with her confidence, her versatility tonight. We've seen her hit a couple of threes, and she's just got great size and strength for somebody who can step out and really attack you in that mid-range area. And now she may be starting to add that three-point game as well. Another split trip. Two-point game. Cannon posts up. Charles was looking towards her. Swings to Heideman. Bonner sets the screen. Heideman dashes, kicks. January 3 swirls in. And a perfect setup from Natisha Heideman, who hasn't seen too much time today that the starting group was doing well in the third quarter, but she gets her moment and makes a play. Charles with the board. A missed layup. Rebound number seven for Kyla Charles. Game clock to four. Bonner three in the air. It's short. But what a turnaround for the Connecticut Sun in the third quarter. Down eight and half, up five through three quarters. Dewana Bonner doing it all, feeding Brianna Jones. Dewana Bonner's kids, Callie and Demi, they get to stay up late tonight and watch mom do her thing. 21 points for Dewana Bonner, 14 Kim in that third quarter. Brendan Glasheen, Kim Adams, let's welcome in Robin Brown. Brendan, when Dewana Bonner's intensity increases, you can see how everyone's intensity around her increases with her. She's talking in the huddle, she's clapping in the huddle, she's yelling, let's go to the crowd. And that not only comes from her poise as a veteran in this league, but it reverts back to what Kurt Miller challenges his team to do each day, which is hold one another accountable. He talks about pushing your teammates to increase their energy. So while Dewana is talking about her individual efforts, you can see how it's affecting the entire Sun roster. Thank you, Robin. Bonner has completely embraced the experience here in Connecticut to the basket. 23 for Tawana Bonner. She's just steamrolling out there right now. There was not a Wings player in sight who can stop her pass. And she was traded here from Phoenix, signed a Supermax extension, recruiting players to come here with the belief we can win a championship. She was not part of the team that went to the finals in 2019, but she was sold on that path. Kurt Miller putting together a great squad, and Dewana Bonner is embracing her teammates in a leadership role. Cannon leaves the three short. Charles has been excellent on the offensive glass, tracks down another. Yeah, that's where you wonder, was that the shot they wanted in a tight game? But Charles picks up the slack with the O board. DB just making the wings look foolish now, but couldn't finish. It was a great fake. Up the other end, Agumba Wale. Too strong on the layup. Up ahead to Heideman. Rolls it out. Charles to the basket. Shouts. Count it at one. And this was a nice secondary fast break. They didn't have anything initially. Nice decision by Heidemann to just slow it out. And then Kyla Charles, a timely cut. And she is hype 
after that one, Kyla Charles continues her charge in recent games. Into double figures for a fourth straight game. This is her third straight game starting. And we saw really the momentum picked up in that Seattle game when the game was pretty much in hand. Kyla was really just out there working on her game and who would have thought it would carry over? And now it's looking like Connecticut is in a good spot here, up eight in the fourth. It's always a good sign when your team's got the lead and you're producing too. Creativity on the block, offensive rebound, Allery. Denied once again, the Connecticut defense has been strong. Points in the paint for the wings were adding up at ease in the first half. And the Sun have just commanded the glass in this game. And I think even more so in this second half, that has clearly been a focus. Constant inside, outside. Charles now into the paint, fades short. Ty Harris the other way. Harrison also out there. Alicia Gray floats one up and in. There's some contact there, and Alicia Gray makes him pay. Yeah, strong take, just so many talented guards on this team, as we've mentioned, who can just attack and get you into the paint. Dallas has now surpassed its season average. 36 points in the paint. And being out-rebounded, which is credit to the Sun. Harrison was hoping to collect. Charles snatches it, looks into Jones, a power dribble, and does the rest. And a nice job of Brianna Jones just running down the middle of that floor, right to the rim. Nobody on the wings really gives her a, a bump. And a nice find by Kyla Charles, who's having a great all-around game. Sun was down eight at half, now up eight here in the fourth. Allery, back up, another denial. Bonner just getting a chance to take a breath. Dallas foul number 32, Kyla Allery. That's her fourth personal. Second team foul. Let's take a look here. Mallory trying to go up with it again. Oof, looks like she really hits the back of her head hard on the court. Dallas will use a timeout. Well, the improvement of Brianna Jones year by year is eye-popping. Averaging 13 a game in 2021, had a career-high 22 against Chicago on Saturday. And Kim, she's sitting on 20 points on oh, 9 of 14. There and there Tied it is. It. <laughs> 22 in back-to-back -back games. Right on cue. And what's incredible about Brianna Jones, she's in her fifth season. She didn't start a game in her first three years. Zero starts. Moved into the starting lineup in the bubble last summer when John Quill Jones was not there. And she just continues to build on her game. Confidence is through the roof. Mabry draws a foul, and she's yet to score, as we've discussed. Between breaks here, she's really yet to get going, and she heads to the free throw line. Connecticut is up by 10. Dallas once led by 14 in this one. Yeah, Mabry had been coming off a career high 28 points in their last win over Minnesota, hit five from deep, but those are just her first points of the game. Second season with Dallas. Was traded there prior to the Wobble season, spent one season with the LA Sparks. That was fun to watch the other day. Heidemann's open off the catch. Gray slows it down, off the catch. Agumbawale is fouled, shooting a three. 
she sensed that Charles might step up and there was too much contact. That's huge. And that's something you're always taught. Don't foul a three-point shooter. You would much rather have them trying to make three from behind the arc than walk into the free throw line, but Agumba Wale surprisingly misses the first. Dallas, 83% as a team. Tonight, 8 of 11, that's 73%. Ogumba Wale, product of Notre Dame, 2019. A terrific run with the Fighting Irish. One of the premier stars, young stars, the game has to offer. And her teammate Marina Mabry from that championship, obviously now back together in Dallas. Sun by six. Thomas has it, drives, kicks, Charles, three. Jones tips it around, rebound to the wings, Agumba Wale, no signs of slowing down to the rim, denied. 15 for Agumba Wale, but her last handful of baskets and even some points at the line, they've been hard to come by. They've definitely picked up the coverage on her. They've, they've made it tougher for her to get inside the lane. They've sent help at her. Thomas with excellent burst, was working one way, then changed direction. A clear lane to the basket. Brian January set to check in next whistle. Four and a half to go. Ogumba Wale for three. Yes! Five point game. You can't get complacent with Arike Agumbawale on the floor. You can't get lazy on defense. You have to stick to your personnel because she can get hot in a in a hurry. Two threes for Agumbawale. Enter tonight tied for first in the W in three-point makes. Jones is surrounded by several wings. Bounce pass to Thomas. Three in the air. It's good. Jasmine Thomas to put the Sun back up eight. And it was a great setup by Kyla Charles, again, who's having a, a great all-around game. It was nearly a turnover. Some high-low by the wings. Heads-up play. Sabali collects and puts it in. And this is where Connecticut wants to work a little clock. It's still a two-possession game. The clock is on your side. Try and run it down a little bit and get a good look. Bonner back rims the jumper. Jones down to the deck once more. Spin move by Gray, hangs in the air and lays it in. Alicia Gray, fantastic off the bench tonight for the Wings. No fear in this Dallas team. And we mentioned not getting complacent on defense for Connecticut, same on offense with the pace at which Dallas can play and get up the floor. In celebration of LGBTQ plus pride, Presented by Deloitte, the WNBA will collaborate with Glisten and Fanatics on an exclusive line of Pride apparel, including Fanatics branded WNBA t-shirts. All WNBA proceeds will benefit Glisten, and fans can purchase the shirts at wnbastore.nba.com. And a lot of athletes in the WNBA are part of the LGBTQ plus community, but we also want to applaud head coach Kurt Miller who, as far as he knows, is the only openly gay male coach in Division I or professional basketball. And it's been that way for a while. So this is a cause that's important to him with male gay coaches knowing that they can stay in their jobs. And we want to applaud Kurt Miller for what he's doing in that area. He hopes that things can be normalized for the next generation. We had news of NFL defensive end Carl Nassib becoming the first openly gay NFL player on an active roster. All things moving in the right direction here during Pride Month. Bonner has been outstanding, folks. 25 points, two off of time, her season best. Sun by six. Connecticut commits a foul, so the shot clock resets to 14. That is January's fourth personal. 
And she's fired up right now. You could tell she's taking this matchup personally with Agumba Wale, and she did not like that foul call, but she's trying to channel it into some positive motivation. Alicia Gray, Mabry. Dances, steps back. Thomas got a piece. Great defense by Jasmine Thomas, locking up there. Bonner's nearly at 50% from the field. 25 points, 13 rebounds. Thomas, step up jumper off the iron. Charles, another offensive rebound. We've said that quite a bit tonight. That's her 10th board. She is just saving her team, especially down here in the stretch when time and score is so important. She's creating extra time and possessions. Jones just got it off as the shot clock hits zero. Looks like a foul was actually, one, one official has a shot clock violation and one signaled a foul. So let's see what they do here. The foul, a foul is being called. It looks like a foul was called after a shot clock violation. A foul on Sabali, but they will go and review this to see whether, I think, the order in which it occurred. Foul before the shot clock violation. But as of now, it was a foul called on Satu Sabali. So the officials take a look. Kyla Charles, the 10 rebounds, a new career best. Brianna Jones, we mentioned earlier in the quarter, has matched her career best in points, which she etched just last game, 22. And yeah, so looking at this replay, it looks like the ball hit the rim. So the shot clock should have reset, which it didn't. To me, it, on that replay, it looked like the ball hit the rim with about a second on the shot clock. And instead of resetting to 14, it was sounded as a shot clock violation. Let's take another look. Well, and also we don't, if that's the case, Kim, then we don't need to see the officials blowing the whistle. That just proves the ball hits the rim. So there shouldn't be a foul. So it goes to zero. Well, actually, wait a second. I, I see what you mean. So. call stands like you said the ball hit the rim and at that point the foul that was whistled even though we couldn't see it on the replay the shot clock had reset right so Dallas it's thought they had the ball and they they started running with it they didn't even they didn't know a whistle had been blown new career high for Brianna Jones 23 points had 22 on Saturday in Chicago. She has been a difference maker in the absence of Jonquel Jones, elevating her game and also elevating the Suns' lead to eight. Ogumba Wale didn't get a whistle. Mabry on the kickout. Thomas pleads it was last touched by Mabry. And they're going to review this too now that we are. <laughs> Under two minutes, they can review who the ball was off on. So we may be in for a, a long 149 here, Brendan. Let's see if we can tell here. Oh yeah, it looked like, to me, didn't it look like Mabry last went off of her hands. Let's see. Thomas taps it. I guess it's a matter of, did her fingertips tap it right there? I don't know if we can quite tell from that angle. The official definitely has, has a better look. It was right in front of him. That's one of those situations where, you know, I wish, wish we were courtside. We're getting there, we're getting closer. Up on the concourse here at Mohegan Sun Arena, Brendan Glasheen, Kim Adams, Robin Brown. Under two to go in the fourth. Reviewing who touched it last, Mabry or Thomas? Yeah, and it looked like they were able to see a different angle of it as I was kind of looking at them, looking at it, and they are going to keep the call as it stands. 
Dallas ball. Shot clock remains at 12 seconds. Big possession for Dallas offensively and a big one, of course, for Connecticut. To try and pull away on the defensive end. Mabry to inbound. Guess who? Ogumbawale around the pick. Sabali penetrates and lays it in. Wait a second, oh, offensive wow. foul. And Bonner is down. Here it is, Sabali so strong at attacking. Ooh, yeah, they're gonna call Sabali with extending that arm after the shot back at Bonner's face. And, it, and they are now gonna review this to see if this should be upgraded to a flagrant one as Dewana Bonner is still down. Here's another look, watch her left arm just swing back at Dewana Bonner and they'll look to upgrade this and some of the things they'll consider is was that a natural basketball motion, which to me, I don't think no. it was. Um, you're never taught that as a player. Was it unnecessary? Was it excessive? I think this is a, a clear candidate for an upgrade to a flagrant one. Again, watch Sabali's left arm swing back and that's something else they look at. Was there a windup? And you could argue that that was a windup. The official was all over it. Well, and Sabali knew it. And before she even looked back to see Bonner was down. Okay, it looks like they just kept it as a common foul. I mean, there's a difference, right? Was it intentional? No, but to your point, that swinging of the arm, you're just, it was, you're yeah, creating it's separation. The, it's the natural basketball motion category for me, which I don't think that was, but they kept it as just an offensive foul. Sun with the ball and the lead. Bonner stays in the game. Switches hands, fades, fires, short. Guess who on the boards? Jones ups her career high to 26. Rihanna Jones just relentless. Again, she's not doing anything eye-popping out there. She's just so solid. Okumbawale for three. Charles, rebound number 11. First career double-double tonight. Career best in rebounds. Thomas to the rim. Lead is 12. Biggest for Connecticut tonight. Also, Kyla hit 100 career rebounds in this game. What a stretch she's having, and it's just a, ooh, maybe got away with a little, another offensive foul there, but what a, a lesson to just make the most of your opportunity, because we mentioned she came in late in the Seattle game a couple games ago when they were down big, but she played like it was a tie game, and she earned the starting spot in the next game and hasn't looked back. Well, it certainly gives you new perspective of this team, and maybe they can go a little bit deeper when Jonquel Jones returns. The Sun dribbling out the clock. Sabali with the interception. Three on one. Akumba Wally got away with the travel. Gray lays it in. Well, this team was down eight at halftime. And we wondered, were they feeling some same things that they felt in Chicago and then the Seattle game last Sunday. The Connecticut Sun fight back. Come from behind and beat Dallas 80 to 70. Yeah, this was an impressive game because like you mentioned, there were a couple lulls, a couple moments where it was like deja vu, turnovers, turnovers. But after nine first half turnovers, just three for Connecticut in the second half. I think that was a big difference maker. And we saw them bounce back and and come back from a couple runs. And impressive win, first win without John Quill Jones. Must feel good to get that one under the belt. Kurt Miller told us physicality as well in the turnovers. We'll be back to wrap things up at Mohegan Sun. A 10 point win for Connecticut. The Sun used a 21 to three run at one point in this game to come back and beat the Dallas Wings 80 to 70. Dewana Bonner, she was a star tonight. She's joined by our own Robin Brown.
Dewana, a three-game losing streak halted tonight, spurred by 14 points from you in that third quarter. What flipped the switch there? I uh, just wanted to win. Uh, we needed this. We needed this for our confidence. Uh, we needed this for our fans, um, the standings, everything. Um, we're just trying to get some wins and uh, stay together uh, through a little bit of adversity. We talk about your veteran leadership, but your energy. When you're screaming, clapping, yelling, let's go, do you see the effects that it has on the entire roster? Of course. Uh, I'm just trying to bring some type of energy when I can, Robin. Sometimes I'm a little tired, so I look for them a little bit. But tonight, I just really wanted this win. I had my babies here, so uh, mommy had to put on the show a little bit. <laughs> Callie and Demi, yes. first time in this arena to mm -hmm. watch you play. What do you feel when you look over and you see them sitting courtside? Oh, man, it's amazing. Uh, I wish I could keep them here, but uh, they had to go back to school. But um, I love having him. It's been really fun. Uh, the team has been great. Can't thank uh, Connecticut organization enough so for how much they helped me since they've been here. Uh, they having a lot of fun. They always like, Mommy, I don't want to leave. So <laughs> uh, just going to have uh, hopefully Sunday they can bring us the same luck. <laughs> You guys have now played four games without JJ, mm -hmm. a couple more possibly. How do you not stay complacent? Um, we're just, we just weathering the storm. Uh, it's not every day that you lose, you know, your leading scorer, your leading rebounder. Uh, we just got to, we just adjust. Uh, it's hard to adjust on the fly, and uh, we're just trying to get some wins when we can, and uh, tonight uh, was a huge one for us. Well, congratulations, DV. Thank you. Thank you so much to Robin and Dewana Bonner, and she's right. It's a big one for the standings, too, because Chicago won their ninth game tonight, and they beat Connecticut twice, and the sky come to town on Sunday. Looking at the box score, Jones, 26, a new career high after setting a career high on Saturday against the sky with 22, 26 in this one. Bonner, two off Kim from matching her, her season best, just a complete game, and Kyla Charles was outstanding once again. And you see the big rebounding numbers there for Bonner and Charles. Well, Dallas came in as the top rebounding team in the league. Connecticut out-rebounds them 45-33, to 33. and I also think we need a petition to let Callie and Demi do online school <laughs> so they could stay around Mohegan Sun a little bit longer. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> and they were fun to watch, uh, even at points from the game, too. All right, the final score tonight, 80-70. to 70. Connecticut snaps the three-game losing streak, sets up a showdown with the sky of Chicago this Sunday, June 27th. 2 p.m. Eastern time tip-off for Kim Adams, Robin Brown, and our entire crew. I'm Brendan Glasheen. Good night from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut.